Welcome again. We are uh, here in the kitchen uh, and the home, beautiful home of perhaps our most celebrated fellow member uh, from the culinary arts, Chef Mark Allison. I would invite you to visit Mark's blog site, www.chefmarkallison.com. Today, Mark is going to uh, demonstrate uh, the preparation and presentation of a few of his favorite recipes. I'd like for you to meet Chef Mark Allison. Thank you, Dick, and welcome to my house. Uh, Rob is behind the camera, and today we are going to do three simple dishes. Uh, we're going to do a carrot soup with uh, some Thai red chili. We're going to do an Asian flavor cantaloupe melon with shrimp, and then we're going to finish off with uh, a fresh chicken with asparagus and roasted carrots. So, let's start. In my pan, I have some vegetable stock already heated up and we're gonna bring that to the boil. My tip of the day would be that if you haven't got a chef's jacket, then buy yourself a good apron, okay? Because you don't wanna ruin your t-shirt or your shirt when you're cooking. When you see all these TV chefs, by the time they're finished making their recipe on TV, they normally gotta throw that t-shirt away because it'll be covered with fat or oil. So, get yourself a nice apron. Also, get yourself a good quality chopping board and make sure that it's not gonna move on the surface. So, if you've got a chopping board without any rubber underneath, then make sure you put a damp cloth and then that'll stop the chopping board from moving. Buy yourself a good quality knife. One of my students, when I was working at Johnson Wales University, actually won a competition and they give me this knife. It's American made, it's a Mercer, and I've had it for about 15 years. Keep it sharp and you should never cut your fingers. So, our first dish, vegetable stock on the go. We've got some carrots. You might see that I haven't peeled the carrots because I'm all about nutrition and really, all the nutrition in any kind of fruit or vegetable is just under the skin. So just wash the carrots, okay? We've got an onion, we've got some garlic, salt and pepper, we've got some coconut milk that we're gonna finish off the soup, and we've got some Thai red chili sauce. So, here we go. You'll realize that I've left the, the uh, root on the onion, okay? That's very important because people ask, how do you not cry when you're cutting an onion? Well, this is, this is there's two tips here. Leave on the root, okay? That holds all the uh, onion together, and then take a sharp knife, okay? And then cut straight through the root, okay? So you've cut the onion in half because now you've got a flat surface because you can't really chop anything that is round or moving along the chopping board. So have a flat surface. Then take your knife, and make sure it's sharp and just cut through the onion, cut across the onion and then cut through again and there's your dice. Now when the onion starts to get a bit smaller then just knock it onto the larger size and then just cut through, cut around the root and basically that's the waste that you've got from your onion. Pop that in the compost bowl and then do it again. Just slice through keeping your fingers out of the way, cut across, and then rock that knife backwards and forwards. When it gets small, knock it on to the larger side, and then just chop through the onion again, and again, that's your waste in the compost bowl. Then pick everything up on your knife, drop it into your pan of hot stock. And this soup basically takes about 10 minutes to make, okay? And now that we're getting the cooler weather, it's ideal for this time of year. Carrots, again, they're gonna roll around the board. And you don't want anything larger than the palm of your hand when you cut. So cut the carrots to the size of your hand, then cut them lengthways, get that flat surface, and then rock that knife backwards and forwards. Keeping your fingers out the way, pick everything up on your knife, drop into the pan. Again, long ways, rock that knife backwards and forwards. And you can see there should be no way you should cut your fingers. You can actually do more damage if you have a blunt knife to a sharp knife, okay? Because a blunt knife, you're actually putting more pressure while you're cutting the object. 
a sharp knife because it's sharp should just cut straight through that vegetable. Carrot soup, very underrated and very cheap. All the ingredients for this soup probably came to around about, I'm gonna say $6, okay? Carrots were just over a dollar, pound of carrots. And then you've got your coconut milk, which I believe was about $2. Then you've got your chili sauce and then your stock. You can use chicken stock if you want. I've got vegetable stock in this, so we're keeping it vegetarian. And it's a great appetizer, or also a great item to have for lunch. So again, drop all of them carrots in. You can see I'm keeping everything clean. You've got to work in a clean order when you're in the kitchen, and you don't want too many things on your chopping board because if you've got too many things on your chopping board more than likely you're going to hit it with your knife and then that could cut your finger or cut your hand and remember being a chef the most important part of your body really are your hands so again we're just cutting through we're getting that flat surface and then rocking the knife backwards and forwards and we'll want round about a pound of carrots, one onion, we've got a couple of cloves of garlic that we're gonna add. We've got our stock already heated on the stove, last carrot, then we're gonna season it with some salt and pepper. We're gonna bring that to the boil, and basically in 10 minutes, that soup will be ready. We're gonna finish it off with the chili sauce and the coconut milk. So, last of the carrots in. And this soup could easily be done the day before. And then just reheat the day your party or a lunch. Move that out of the way. Garlic, just take the back of your knife, crush it down. And then, again, drop that knife backwards and forwards. And you've got your minced garlic. The more you chop garlic, the stronger the flavor. There's no point in chopping it a great deal because all of this is going into the blender. Look at that, all nice and clean. That's the waste at the minute. Season. I've got some sea salt we'll add. We've got some black pepper to add. This is going in the end with the chili sauce. And that's basically soup done. It's on the stove, 10 minutes, any kind of soup, it's literally 10 minutes. You don't want to boil and boil and boil away because what happens is all the nutrition goes up into the air and you lose it. So bring it to the boil, let it simmer for 10 minutes and then it's done, okay? Then you want a blender. So we're going to take off the soup and we are going to carefully pour it into our blender, okay? You don't want to burn yourself. So just carefully pour everything in. And then we're gonna finish off this soup with a can of coconut milk. And then we have some Thai red chili sauce that we're gonna add. And that's basically it. Then we're gonna put our lid on the blender. I always put a cloth on the top. Then we're gonna put it on the machine. That is our soup done. We're gonna take our bowl. This is red hot. And we're just gonna pour it into our soup bowl. Look at the color of that. And all it is, is carrots. One onion, some garlic, finished off with coconut milk and Thai red chili. Absolutely amazing. The smell is fabulous. You give that to your family on a cold night or you've got friends coming round or other family members coming round. This is the perfect soup to serve family style and with friends and family. So hopefully you'll try this. Easy, five or six dollars, that's all it costs. 10 minutes to make. 
So moving on to our second recipe. I actually taught in Singapore about 12 years ago and I went to a hawker store and these hawker stores you can buy a variety of food and I came across this dish and I thought this is absolutely superb and I'm going to make it when I get back to America. So when I went to the local uh, supermarket I couldn't find light cheese and I couldn't find fresh crab so I changed the light cheese to cantaloupe melon which apparently Dick loves and we changed the crab to shrimp. So now this actually dish is my dish, okay? So it's basically balls of melon with shrimp and then it's seasoned with some lemon, lime, garlic, red, chili, mint, cilantro, and then sweetened with some honey, local honey, you've got to buy local honey, okay? And then we've got some pistachio nuts and we've got some fish sauce. Now, if you've ever smelled fish sauce, it smells like sweaty feet, okay? It's absolutely terrible. And it always reminds me of the smell in my wife's car. And then one time I had to go and pick up the, the boys from football and they get in my car and they start stripping off as they do. And the smell was terrible. That was the first and last time they ever drove in my car. After that, I used to pick them up in my wife's car. And then I understood why the car smelled. But you might be thinking, and why are you putting some sweaty socks into a melon and shrimp dish? Well, actually, when it's combined with the honey and the citrus fruit, it tastes absolutely amazing. And it gives this absolutely fabulous mouthfeel. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. We are gonna take some honey. We're gonna actually use this bowl that's got the ingredients in. So we're gonna take some honey and we're gonna put that in to our bowl. Move that out the way. Then we're gonna take some garlic and just like I did before, basically crush the garlic down and then just rock your knife backwards and forwards. Don't think about speed. Speed will come as you work with a good quality knife and it's nice and sharp, okay? And then put your left hand on the top of your knife and then just rock it backwards and forwards and that minces up your garlic. So we're gonna add that garlic to our honey. Then we're gonna add our sweaty feet or the fish stock into our bowl as well. Move that out of the way. Then we have our chili. So remember, most of the heat is in the seeds. So we're not gonna add the seeds to our dish. We're just gonna make it like a light heat. So slice it lengthways, then turn it round, and then slice it into small dices. And then again, just rock your knife backwards and forwards. Now one tip, especially for the guys out there, okay? Once you've dealt with the chili, make sure you wash your hands, especially before you go to the restaurant, okay? because you might feel that heat, not in your mouth, but somewhere else, okay? So, that's the base of our dish. Honey, fish stock. Then we have our lemon and lime. Notice how I took the knife off the board, okay? Because we just want the instruments or the equipment that we're using at that time. We've got our lemon. We're gonna take off the zest. And this will add a beautiful, citrus flavor to our dish. All chefs have a signature dish, and I've been a chef for 40 years, actually 42 years, getting on. Uh, and this, when I came back from Singapore, became my signature dish because it is so easy. And every time I make it, everybody seems to enjoy it. In fact, if I'm invited to go to somebody's house, this is normally the dish I'll take and it's funny because all the shrimp seems to disappear with the kids and the melon is left for the parents. So we've got our zest. Now we need our juice. So we're just gonna take that lemon juice into our compost. Take out that juice. Beautiful. You can smell it. Absolutely fabulous. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna add 
our fresh herbs. We've got cilantro and we have some mint. So we're gonna take some cilantro, around about a tablespoon. We're gonna take some mint as well. Get rid of this. Round about a tablespoon. And then your herbs, again, bring all your herbs together and then take your knife and then just rock it backwards and forwards. Keeping your fingers out of the way. You don't want to over chop herbs because what happens is you just lose all that essential oil into the chopping board. And that's what you want. You want all that flavor to come out and go in your dish. Pick up your herbs, drop it into your, your dressing. You can always tell if you've over chopped your herbs because your chopping board will be green, okay? Then just mix that together. And then we've got our cantaloupe. Cantaloupes, push the button, the belly button on the underside. And if it goes in, it's not too soft, it should be firm, but it should give way, then that should be fresh. We will find out when we cut through. Again, cut through the center. We're just gonna use half and then take out all the seeds. That smells absolutely fabulous. Now, sometimes when I've made this dish, I'll use a combination of cantaloupe, watermelon, and honeydew. So you're getting three different flavors and also three different colors, okay? So, take our dressing. Melon baller, okay, Parisian scoop, we call them back in Europe. You got one of these, just scoop out the cantaloupe. If you haven't got a melon baller, then just cut cubes of melon. Remember, you wanna keep it small enough that everything will fit on the size of a fork. Because normally, if you're cooking something or you're making a preparation like this, you're just gonna serve it with a fork or a small spoon. So everything needs to be bite size portions. So we're just working our way around the cantaloupe. What I would generally do is make this part first and just let all of these flavors infuse in the refrigerator. And then the last minute, I would add our shrimp. Because the problem you've got is, if you add the shrimp too early, especially if you make it the night before, the lemon juice and the lime juice will overcook the shrimp, okay? It'll make the shrimp too tough. So you can combine all the ingredients together and that will infuse the flavors together, but add the shrimp at the last minute. So move that out of the way. Take our spoon and mix all of that melon with our dressing. And then we've got some shrimp, which has been steamed. And we're just gonna mix that together. And look at the color. Beautiful pink of the shrimp. And then you've got the orange, the cantaloupe melon. You've got the green, tons of flavor, packed with nutrition. If I'm having a dinner party, then I'll get a cocktail glass. And then all we do is serve it like this. How easy is this dish? You can serve it family style, just leave it in the bowl. I can serve it just like this. Take some mint. Stick it on the top. And there we go. Basically restaurant style, melon and shrimp. And we'll finish it off with a few pistachio nuts just to give it extra crunch. And there we go. That's my signature dish. How easy is that? Was that less than 10 minutes? Gotta be absolutely wonderful. So we're back and what we're gonna have is a tasty chicken and I'm gonna show you how to cut up a chicken because it's more economical. You know, with three boys, I'm all about the money and the cheaper the food, the better for me. So I'm always looking for bargains. 
and a good bargain is actually to buy a whole chicken and then cut it into pieces yourself because you're paying for somebody to cut that chicken up okay so whether it's the legs the breast or the wings so i'll go show you how to do that in one minute back to one of my favorite vegetables the carrot okay this is gonna be chicken with carrot, asparagus, and a mushroom sauce, okay? So what we're gonna do is, I got some carrots, I washed them again, okay? So we're, we're basically looking for things similar size. So that one obviously is bigger than that one, so we're just gonna cut it lengthways, all the way down. And then everything else seems to be okay. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a tray, and another tip, and I'm sure you know this, you don't know how to be a chef. But, put some foil on your tray. Saves on the washing up, okay? And then we're just gonna put our carrots on the tray. We're gonna get some olive oil. And we're just gonna sprinkle some olive oil on. We've got some black pepper. We're just gonna sprinkle some black pepper on. And again, I like to use sea salt. We're gonna put some sea salt on, and then we're gonna pop that into the oven, and that will take around about 15 minutes to partly cook the carrot. Then we're gonna be adding the chicken and the asparagus, so hopefully everything comes out on one tray in around about 30 minutes, okay? So they're gonna go in the oven. Oven is preset. Remember, don't leave the oven to turn on when you're putting these in, because they're not gonna cook evenly. The oven needs to be preheated. That's one of the biggest mistakes people make, especially when they're making bread or cakes is they forget to turn on the oven. Always preheat the oven. 370, in they go. Our chicken. Okay, so what we're gonna do, take it out of that bowl, onto our chopping board. Then we've got our knife, our sharp knife, okay? So you can take off the wing tips. I've got another chopping board here just to actually display the chicken so it's easy for everybody to follow. And then just cut through the wing tips. And you'll realize that everything from this chicken you can use okay so take your knife and just cut through the skin again if you've got a sharp knife it should just glide through the skin then take the legs and then flip that chicken over put your thumb where the joints are and then just dislocate the legs okay then take your knife cut around the skin and around that oyster and then just cut that leg off okay we do the same on the other side cut through the skin pulling back the flesh it should pop out the joint and then take your knife and take off the other leg now what we're going to do is we're going to cut we're going to trim off any fat that can go in our bowl and then open up the leg and then you'll see some fat there take your knife and then cut through, and that cuts through the joint, okay? So you've got your drumstick, you've got your thigh, and then we're gonna do that on the other side. Take off any excess fat, open up the drumstick, see where that joint is, and then cut through, and that's your thigh, that's your drumstick. Then turn the bird over, turn it towards you, and then find where the breastbone is with your finger, and then just go down one side, cut through the wishbone, take your knife, keep your knife to the bone, cut all the way down, cut through the joint, there's your breast. Tidy it up, take off any excess skin, and then you're gonna do the same on the other side. Okay, bind where the breastbone is, take your knife, Keep it to the bone. Cut all the way down. Cut through. And then find the joint. And then cut through by the joint. And then that's your carcass. There's your breast. Trim it up. And what we're gonna do, because these breasts are rather big, we're just gonna take that part of the breast and leave the wing. And then we'll do the same on the other side. And there's the wing again. So there's your chicken portions, okay? Now, for the carcass, what I generally do is take the knife and take off 
any excess skin. Take off the bottom of the parson's nose, as we call it back in England, and then trim down off any of the fat. That can all go there. And the reason why we're keeping the fat is if you like to do roast potatoes, put your potatoes in the oven and then sprinkle over that fat and that fat will melt onto the potatoes. Take your knife, cut through the carcass, open it up, cut through, again, have a sharp knife, turn it over, keeping your fingers out of the way, cut through, there's your carcass, and that will make some beautiful fresh chicken stock. So you've got the carcass for the stock with your wingtips. You've got the fat that you can render down and cook some roast potatoes with or roast parsnips. Then you've got your drumsticks, your thighs, your wings, and your breast. And that chicken was 550. If you bought that prepared that way, you're probably talking $15. And this way you utilize the whole chicken to make stock, to make fat, and then you've got the meat to make dinner. Okay, so our last dish is gonna be pan roasted chicken with uh, mushroom sauce. Uh, finished off with some creme fraiche. It's very popular in Europe and it's basically heavy cream and sour cream mixed together, okay? So it gives this beautiful flavor to your mouth. That's gonna finish off the sauce. The one thing you've gotta remember is do not over boil this. It just wants to simmer. We've got our chicken, our carrots are in the oven, roasted. We've got some asparagus. So what we're gonna do with the chicken is put our pan on the stove and then just season the chicken. Again, I'm using sea salt, a little bit of black pepper, and then we'll just turn that over. Season the other side, okay? And you might think, well, he's a healthy chef, why is he using salt? Uh, salt brings out the flavor, but when you are cooking yourself, and this is one of the problems that people don't realize is, you know, that a sprinkle is a sprinkle, it's not a teaspoon. Now, if you just look at a box of cereal, you're probably gonna find in one portion of cereal, there'll probably be half a teaspoon of salt, and that's how to preserve it. So, when you're cooking at home, you basically know what you're putting into your food. That's why I'm a great believer in what we need to do as a nation is actually cook at home to be healthier because then at least you know what you're eating. So we've seasoned our chicken breast. We're gonna add some oil to the pan and I'm only doing the one breast. Um, Dick told me, cut back on the amount of money you've spent on this. Just cook the one chicken breast. We can use that in another segment. So we're gonna bag that up. That's gonna be on the next segment. So if somebody's got some legs, okay? I've got the prime meat, I've got the breast. Okay, so we're gonna add that. And immediately you can hear, hear that sizzle of the pan. The pan has got to be hot, okay? Don't add the oil too quick because what will happen is once the pan starts to warm up and the oil warms up, it actually burns the oil. So get the pan hot, then add the oil. And then we want a nice sear on that chicken skin. So for the sauce, let's just get rid of some of these mushrooms. And a little tip on the mushrooms, if they're dirty, just get a piece of paper towel and just wipe them with a paper towel. Do not wash them because mushrooms absorb water and lose flavor, so they wanna be dry, okay? So, for our sauce, we are going again, notice I've left the root on, cut through our onion, we've got our flat surface, and then cut through the onion again, cut across, and then cut through. I'm making it nice and fine this time. Knock it over onto the larger side. And then cut through. Again, cut through. And basically, that's your root. That can go in the compost. And what we'll do is we'll just put these onions into our bowl. Because we're waiting for that chicken to get a nice color. So we're just slicing through our onion, slice across, and then back through the onion. Again, knock it over, slice it, take off as much of the onion 
and there's the root. That goes in the compost. Let's check our chicken. Beautiful color. We'll just see it the other side now. And then we'll pick up our onion, pop it into our bowl. We've got our peeled garlic. So again, just crush down on the garlic and then keeping your fingers out of the way, rock that knife backwards and forwards. And then hand on the top of the knife and mince up that garlic. And we're just gonna leave that to the side of the board while I deal with this chicken. We've got some nice color going on there. We're gonna take out the tray that's got the carrots on and then we're just gonna place that chicken on top of the carrots, okay? As you can see, our carrots are starting to cook away. They've been in the oven around about 15, 20 minutes. We'll just put that tray there. We will take our chicken breast, lay it on top of the carrots. Now you could spread them carrots around and put all the chicken onto that tray. And then we're just gonna pop this into the oven and that should be done in around about 20 minutes. For our sauce, we're gonna turn down the heat. We're gonna add a little bit more oil. We're gonna add our onions first. So move these onions around. I haven't added the garlic yet because what will happen is if we add the garlic too early, it'll just burn. Okay, so we're just gonna leave the garlic out. We're just gonna cook them onions for a little while. And then move this plate out of the way. So we don't need it. We've got our asparagus, our parsley. We've got some stock to go into the sauce. Our creme fraiche, salt and pepper. We've got our mushrooms. So the mushrooms, cut in half, and then just slice. Pick up, drop in. Cut in half, slice. Pick up, drop in. Easy. Remember, just keep your fingers out of the way. We'll add a little bit of salt little bit of black pepper and then we're going to add some stock and we're just going to let that cook through we're going to add our garlic because we don't want burnt garlic we just want the nice flavor of garlic coming through so I've added some chicken stock to that remember if you've cut up your chicken then you can make your own fresh stock. And you're just gonna let that simmer away. We'll finish off with some parsley, the creme fraiche, our asparagus. Just cut off the tie. Take out one asparagus and then just snap it wherever it snaps. That's the root. Now, if I was making asparagus soup, I would just use the whole lot, okay? But this is gonna be a vegetable on the plate, the side, so it needs to be nice and tender, not chewy. So line up that one with the rest and then just take your knife and cut through. And that's your asparagus done. Put them in the compost and we're basically ready with our sauce on the go. We'll finish it off with some parsley, creme fraiche, and then we'll finish off this asparagus in with the chicken and the carrots. So all we're gonna do with the asparagus basically is grab hold of the asparagus and we're just gonna lay it on the tray with the chicken and the carrots. And then five minutes from now, the whole thing should come out of the oven, beautifully cooked, ready to serve. Okay, so we'll pop these in the oven. So to finish our uh, sauce, that stock is reduced. You can see a beautiful color on it. Now we're gonna just turn down that heat because we just want it to gently simmer. And we're gonna add our creme fraiche. We're just gonna spoon that in. And this is gonna give a beautiful creamy texture 
to our soup as well as being relatively healthy. But I'm all about health, but I'm all about moderation. You know, you've got to enjoy what you eat. I don't follow any particular diet, but if you want to follow a diet, the most researched diet in the world is the Mediterranean diet, okay? And that has been from blue zones around the, the uh, world where you've got people who are in their 90s and 100 who are still alive, still healthy, don't have heart disease, don't have cancer, don't have type 2 diabetes. And basically the Mediterranean diet is all about fresh, healthy ingredients, but it's not just a diet. It's about actually eating together as a family and eating with your friends so that you all get together and you can actually have a conversation because that's what we seem to be lacking in society today is just sitting at a kitchen table, eating great food and having a conversation. It's also about getting out into the fresh air and getting daylight, you know? Vitamin D basically only comes from the sunlight and everybody's lacking vitamin D. That's why there's so many people depressed around this country because we're not getting out into the fresh air and loving nature and getting that vitamin D. So, Mediterranean diet, if you're gonna follow a diet. Otherwise, just buy whole foods. I class them as a one ingredient food. That parsley is one ingredient. There's no additives, preservatives, colorants, nothing. It's just one ingredient. So you combine a whole host of one ingredient, like your onions, your carrots, your garlic, your creme fraiche, you mix it together, and you've got a wholesome sauce. So, our parsley, we're just gonna take some of the parsley, and then we're just gonna chop this up. Again, keep your fingers out of the way. I learned many years ago at culinary school, repetition is the mother of all skill. So every time you pick up a knife and you chop something, you're reinforcing that skill. So just keep your fingers out of the way, roughly chop your parsley. Again, don't over chop it, pop it into the sauce. Clean down your chopping board, stir the sauce around. And then as a chef, you should always taste whatever you make. You know what? That is absolutely amazing. Um, at 16 years old, somebody made the right decision by becoming a chef and I wish I had followed their footsteps because that is amazing and I should be a chef. But never mind, because Dick's here and Dick's gonna take over and finish off the sauce any minute now. But we are now gonna get our tray out our asparagus should be cooked. Hopefully our carrots are cooked and hopefully our chicken is cooked and we're gonna plate everything up and these two guys are gonna have a taste of what we have just made. And there it is, done. Everything on one tray, everything coming out in the oven in one go. Let's take off some of the carrots, put them on our plate. Remember, you eat with your eyes, so it's gotta be something that looks inviting. And it's gotta have a lot of color. It's gotta have a lot of flavor. There's our chicken breast. We'll just put that onto the plate as well. We'll move this tray out of the way. We will get a spoon. Take our sauce, spoon that sauce over the chicken. Let's pretend we're in a restaurant. We've got a parsley, it was on the top. And there we go. Easy. Chicken, roasted carrots, asparagus with mushroom sauce. Done. Literally takes 30 minutes from start to finish. There we go. Now we have a little treat um, for everyone. Uh, Rob and I had discovered between sessions uh, a lot more the, that, uh, about Mark Allison than, than we previously knew. Uh, most of, most of my knowledge of his background came from his own writings and a few conversations we had had in the past. So uh, now you're gonna get to learn a little bit more about the real 
Chef Mark <laughs> Allison, okay, and, and a little of his history. And so uh, it's all yours again. Thank you, Dickie. I, we are now friends. This is the first <laughs> time we met, I called him Mr. Uh, Dick to begin with, <laughs> but Dick. now I believe it's Dickie. Okay, well, we're on that sort of friendship now. So thank you, Dickie. And thank you, Rob, for being here. And as you look at my kitchen, how clean that kitchen is. Wash as you go. Uh, a little bit of history about me, okay? Uh, if you haven't already gathered, uh, I was born in Charleston. You can hear that accent, that southern accent. Uh, sometimes people cannot understand ex exactly what I say. Uh, but actually, I am English. Believe it or not, I am English. I was born in Newcastle upon Tyne, close to Newcastle. That's what they generally say. Uh, a mining town. Uh, not much mining goes on there now, but that's where I'm from. And it, basically, my accent is more Scottish than English because it's just below the Scottish border. Uh, Dickie was asking how I became a chef. Well, you know what? You see this chopping board? When I left school, I was as thick as this chopping board. I left school with not one qualification. I used to stare out the window and daydream. Uh, but the one thing I was good at was I used to watch my mother at home cook. And my mother was a great cook. Uh, my father was a factory worker, but he loved to garden. So everything that came into the kitchen was basically fresh from the garden. My mother was a cleaner, but in between cleaning jobs, she would make absolutely fabulous food. And I just fell in love with working with food in the kitchen with my mother. And at 16, I had the choice to either go down a mine, uh, a shipyard, or a car factory, and I chose to be a chef. And out of 42 years, I've only been unemployed for two weeks. I've traveled the world. At the age of 16, I became a chef. I got a job at a hotel, four-star hotel, worked there for two years, and then after that, I traveled around Europe, learning the trade. Then I came back and I decided, you know what, at the age of 24, I need to get an education. I never really believed in education before the age of 24. I was really a slow learner. So at the age of 24, while working full time, I went to night school and for 10 years, three nights a week, I did five years culinary, then I did a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, and then I considered myself educated by the time I was 34. Uh, by then I'd already met my wife, I'd already become a teacher, we had two boys. And uh, I was offered a position in uh, America, to come to America. And being from the 70s and 80s, I grew up on Starsky and Hutch in the streets of San Francisco. So believe it or not, I thought I was going to go to California. So out of 500 teachers who applied to go to England, I thought, California, here we come. One chef out of 500 people had applied because we're all teachers, teaching math and kindergarten and everything else. He didn't live in California. He lived in Anchorage, Alaska. And we had two boys at the time and my wife just said, we are not going to Anchorage, Alaska, not with two boys. So anyway, this guy actually rings me up at home in Wales, because now I'm living in Wales. And he said, Mark, my daughter has won a four year scholarship to Oxford University. This is our final year. Nobody would exchange with us the last three years. Please exchange. So I said, Glenn, we're coming. What happens then? I've got to go downstairs and tell my wife, oh, by the way, we are now going to Alaska for a year. As you can imagine, there was a lot of noise coming from the kitchen. A lot of smashing the glass and pots and pans getting thrown around. And then it was silence for about two months because she wouldn't talk to me. Eventually, she did. We went to Alaska and actually we had the best, one of the best years of our life. We lived in a log cabin. We used to have a log fire every night. I went to the school, I taught. My wife was very popular, became friends with a lot of people, and we had a fabulous time. We'd wake up in the morning and you'd hear something rubbing across the window, and we'd open the window and there'd be this gigantic moose's head licking the salt off the glass. There'd be brown bear running down the street. Over that year, we had snow for nine months. But it was fabulous, we both enjoyed it. But this is how my whole philosophy about food changed because up until then, I was classically trained in French, so there was a lot of fat, sugar, and salt going into my food. But that year, in 1999, my son, who was 14 months at the time then, became ill. We ended up taking him to hospital, and he ended up becoming a type one diabetic. Now, type two, his pancreas just didn't 
uh, produce any insulin anymore. So he's insulin dependent. So my whole philosophy changed that day. Everything then was healthy. And I'm not like being a health nut where I'm buying superfoods. I'm just talking about healthy food as one ingredient food where you buy carrots, you buy celery, you buy onions and it's in season. You cut back on your meat, you cut back on your dairy, but you're still eating healthy. So my son now is 22 years old. He's at CPCC. He's doing what uh, Rob is doing. He wants to actually be behind the camera and make short videos and he's doing exceptionally well. In fact, his last uh, medical, his blood sugars were near perfect that you can be for a type one diabetic. So anyway, fabulous time in Alaska. We'll go back to Wales. We're having a good time. I'm teaching by then and we win every major competition in Europe. So much so that I'm hired by Johnson & Wales University. So I come over with the family in 2004. I start working for Johnson & Wales and then I'm promoted to the Dean. So this kid who couldn't read or write at the age of 16 is now in his 40s in charge of 1400 students, 60 staff and a $10 million budget every year. And I'm thinking I've got it made. But unfortunately, where there is light, there's always darkness. And that's when we found out my wife, who I'd been married to for quite a while by then, had stage four cancer. And she'd had it for a number of years even before we changed to a healthy eating diet, that actually slowed the growth of the cancer down. And she was told that she had about three years to live. So we basically changed her to a, a really plant-based diet, just still ate the, the occasional meat, but it was mainly uh, fruits and vegetables and grains, uh, nuts, beans and seeds. And she actually lived eight years until she passed away in 2015. Um, by then I'd already left Johnson & Wales and I was helping to open a, a culinary school in New Orleans but I had to leave that position to nurse my wife until she passed away. So then the first time in my life I'm out of work and uh, the Dole Food Company approached me to come and work for them. Mr Murdoch, the owner of the Dole Food Company, was 94 years old at the time. He was a pescatarian. He believed in the power of food. So it was a perfect fit. I started writing Mr. Murdoch's menus. I started writing all the recipes for the Dual Food Company. And we had a partnership with the Walt Disney Corporation. So I did all the recipes for Star Wars, um, Beauty and the Beast, Cars 3, The Incredibles 2. I had an absolutely fabulous job. And I loved that job for three years. And then they go and sell, sell the company and I'm out of work again. Second time in my life. Who do you think gets the, in the 50s and has never lost a job and I've lost two jobs in the space of three years? But then I get hired by the Cabarrus Health Alliance. And now, what do I do? I teach people, I teach the community how to cook and be healthy. And it's all about picking the right ingredients, using the right cooking methods, along with getting outside in the fresh air, exercising, being positive and communicating with people. I've got a perfect job. So it's been my pleasure to be in front of the camera today. I hope you have learned something. Three easy dishes. Anybody can do at home. All my dishes, you can go online, find my recipes. They're all easy to make, easy to obtain the uh, fruits and vegetables and the other ingredients that go along and they can be made in minutes. So it's been my pleasure. My name is Mark Allison. Nice to see you, bye bye.